All right, now the don'ts. And I think that these, again, apply especially to a small business owner. Don't think that social is free marketing. I don't know how many businesses I've talked to have said they started doing it because social's free. Facebook, unfortunately, their little bait and switch has taught us a thing or two about the fact that that's not the case. So consider doing some paid social promotions. You don't have to do a lot. But these, these social networks, if you're gonna use them, consider targeting your audience in specific geographical locations uh, and by interest and by age group. You can do that. Don't buy followers. Don't think that it's all about having 10, 15, 20,000 followers and that your woes will go away. Uh, there are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, uh, scams out there that are focused on, on that. Don't rely on giveaways and contests. This is sort of the world that I think small businesses have lived in so long in social. It's like, gotta, gotta come up with some cool new buzzworthy contest. Think beyond that. Again, think more on content and maybe real world experiences. Don't think that social is the cure to all your marketing woes. Uh, as great as it's been for us and as, as fun as it's been for me to make a career in this, it certainly has not been the, the solution to the woes that we have, we've had in, in parts of the business. And then I think the final thing is don't try to do this all at once, right? There have been a lot of things that I've shared here today. If you tried to go and implement it all at once, you would probably fail. Um, Think about some of the things that you've learned and take one or two of those and try them out. And if those work, then build on that. Don't try to do it all at once. And then finally, I mentioned this to Rachel before we started, but maybe we ought to think about, um, you know, as a, as a member of the community, grew up here, went to Wasatch High School. If there's interest, I'd love to come back at some point and think about, a, think about doing a half-day workshop that really focuses on taking businesses that don't feel like they're really set up right. They don't know how to target their audience. They don't know how to find influencers. And we do a, a workshop where we just basically get a couple of us that really understand how to do this. And we go around and help you to get your account set up and think about who you ought to be targeting. Uh, I think that'd be a fun thing for us to consider. So with all that, I will, I'll tell you, thank you for your time. I know I'm probably a little over, but I'd love to take you know, maybe a few minutes of questions if, uh, if the group has them. Uh, we're gonna go to my brother, Scott. <laughs> I just wait for the last because you know my, my worry about humiliation, it's gonna all come out right now. I'll bug you. Um your chart for the CEO and their influence is interesting. You had the average CEO is the highest among all those. I think not the he was not. The average employee was the highest. Sorry, average, what did I say? The CEO. The average No, no, no. The, the CEO is not as trusted among the customers as the day-to-day -day employee would be. Right, but I think one of the flaws was the customer. Like, like, like not, it was like a, um, Go back like to a here. influencer, like a, someone, and he was less than the employee. And he was less than the actual employee, which is really interesting. I have a lot of slides. Dun, 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 dun. Here it is. Here it is. Just, just because I, as, as I think about it, man, if I can get my customer. Oh, are you talking about the activist consumer? consumer yeah. So that is the activist consumer in this. It was, it was ultimately, it's a, it's a customer that has been kind of hired to be an activist for the brand. So sometimes businesses will, will pay customers to come and be to help to activate uh, their brand. So that's who, that who that ultimately is. And they are, the, they are the gray chart here. So they are, again, given the fact Look, look where they are in integrity. They, they yeah, so that's paid. That's an, okay, so they're paid. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I want to get away from my brother quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. Um, so where would, like, a customer that's posting what they like by product or what they don't like, where would they be on this chart? So that, that was not included in here, but I expect that they would be high. If it's a, if it's a customer, who of their own, you know, their own sort of free will choice, they chose to post something to recommend, those guys are off the charts. 
right? I mean, if you have a friend or a family member who is so passionate about something that they have, that they bought, that they're willing to go onto Facebook and tell other people about it, how much more likely are you to like, you know, to, to, to give credit to what they're saying? Uh, you, you give it a lot. I mean, I, they would probably be the most trusted people at all. So it's a good thing to think about. How do you find those people? Not necessarily pay them, but encourage them, incent them somehow to share their experience with your brand. Maybe you say, you know what? If you write a Facebook post, I worked with a local business in, in Utah County and said, we have to do this thing where we say, if you are willing to uh, to tweet out or Facebook post your experience, we're going to give you free shipping. So it's like, it's, you know, think about some way to incent them to, to share what their experience is. Good time for another. Yeah, two more questions. Two more questions. So for a lot of us, but we have small businesses where it includes maybe two or three employees. Yeah. So you don't have that big employee base to build your, uh, your media on. So would you go to the consumer then, or would you do it as an owner? Because in that sense, you're just yeah. like you said, the CEO. I, I wouldn't look at those as being mutually exclusive things. I would say. We're going to still do it with our employees, but I'm going to also, one of my first orders of business is I'm going to try to find those employees who do love what we're doing. But if you only have one to two employees, I mean, that's, you're not really... Sorry, did I say, find those, find those customers. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Go, go out, in addition to using the employees, go out and find those customers who do love the brand and try to figure out a way to work with them. Um, <coughs> There's a, there's a brand down in Utah County that we actually, my wife and I bought a new furnace and an air conditioner from them. We spent all sorts of money. And they're called Western Heating and Air. They are really good about trying to encourage their customers, their happy customers, to go and give them a review online. If you go and look at their reviews that they have on Google, they have thousands of super positive reviews. It's the reason I use them. So, In that sense, do we make it a little bit more easier? Do I cut paste some of the good reviews and put them so they're easy to find, or do you leave it at that? Yeah, I, I would highlight good reviews. You know, the, <coughs> the thing you have to be careful of is anybody that comes to your website is going to expect positive reviews. And so, you know, honestly, I think it's a good idea to not just always post the positive reviews, but include reviews that sometimes are where it's mixed and be comfortable being that transparent about things. What I would for sure do is if that company is out uh, soliciting reviews, then I would figure out a way to, again, to incent that customer, give them some incentive to, to not just give the third party uh, a review, but to encourage them to go and post. Some, you gotta figure out a way to get them out actively posting about it. Uh, maybe it's coming to your page, maybe it's going to their own Facebook page and posting, but think about ways that you can get them encouraged. Last question. Just kind of along the same lines, thinking, what are the risks, risks and benefits of hiring, you know, someone under 30, 10 hours a week to kind of run your account, put out good content, monitor your complaints, and things like that? Is that what do you, what do you think? Um, there are absolutely risks associated with that, um, and there are benefits. Uh, I think the common thing that I've seen is businesses that go out and hire a new college grad and, and the thinking is, well, you know, they, uh, they're a millennial, so they know how to, they use these tools day to day, so certainly they'll be able to come in and run our business social. And most businesses that have done that have regretted it just because they did realize it's like, man, doing social media for a business is a lot more difficult than doing it for my own personal page. I like to equate it to, uh, you know, a business that says, hey, I'm going to go and hire a new college grad to come and run my, my accounting books and my finance books because he, he knows how to use mint.com or, or Quicken. He, like, he, he, he uses these tools, so surely he can come in and run my stuff. So it's more complex than that. A lot of times you don't have the option, though. Like, that's what you have. And so that's where I think the importance of helping them to understand what is okay and what is not 
even for a small business, if you have somebody else doing your social networking, if, you're, if they're running your accounts for you, I would make sure that you have some sort of a social policy in place to protect yourself. Um, there are a lot of businesses that get into trouble because employees say something they shouldn't and then they have very little recourse because there was never a policy or guidelines that were ever put into place to prevent, uh, you know, to, to, to act on that once it happened anyway. So I'd be, just be careful with that. And, and when they're getting started, I would monitor what they're posting uh, pretty closely. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you.